Hello, beloved. Today is Saturday of the first week of Advent, December 4th, 2021. I don't know what kind of feedback had gotten around to Peter after his first letter, but here in this second letter, he reminds us that he wasn't making this stuff up as he went along. He was an eyewitness of the majesty of Christ. Let's begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 25, beginning at verse 1. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait on you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 332 from Lutheran Service Book, Savior of the Nations, Come. Today we sing stanzas 5 through 8. God the Father was his source, back to God he ran his course, into hell his road went down. Back then to his throne and crown. For you are the Father's Son, Who in flesh the victory won, By your mighty power make whole All our hills of flesh and soul. From the manger newborn light Shines in glory through the night Darkness there no more resides In this light faith now abides Glory to the Father sing Glory to the Son, our King. Glory to the Spirit be, now and through eternity. Today's reading is from the second letter of St. Peter, the first chapter. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and excellence, by which He has granted to us His precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, 
and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election, for if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. For in this way there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore I intend always to remind you of these qualities, though you know them and are established in the truth that you have. I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to stir you up by way of reminder, since I know that the putting off of my body will be soon, as our Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me. And I will make every effort, so that after my departure you may be able at any time to recall these things. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed, to which you will do well to pay attention, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, when the day shall dawn upon us from on high, to give light to them who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins, and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we remember and give thanks to God for St. John of Damascus, theologian and hymn writer. We return to Celebrating the Saints by William Whedon. John was born around A.D. 675 and raised in Damascus. His considerable gifts landed him a position as an administrator in the Muslim Caliphate in that city. Yet his love for his Lord and his devotion to the Church led him to forsake this position of worldly wealth and influence, enter a monastery, and finally be ordained a presbyter. As a custodian of the apostolic doctrine, he forcefully resisted when the Byzantine emperor, Leo the Asarian, tried to outlaw the use of images in the church. John constantly taught that once the eternal word had become flesh, that flesh could be depicted, and the depiction could be honored. And similarly, the flesh of Christ's saints could be depicted and grace the walls of the churches and the homes of Christians. The church's use of iconography was simply a consequence of the Incarnation itself. Luther would later express quite similar teachings against the radical reformers who sought to remove art from the churches. As a theologian, John is often regarded as the last of the great church fathers of the antiquity. His work on the Orthodox faith summarized the dogmatic tradition that he had received and it is cited more than once by Martin Chemnitz in his great work on Christology. In his book on the faith, John freely confesses, It is impossible either to say or fully to understand anything about God beyond what has been divinely proclaimed to us, whether told or revealed by the sacred declarations of the Old and New Testaments. Similarly, his fount of wisdom was a massive compendium of the work of previous theologians. Melanchthon and other Lutheran theologians used its structure and form as a guideline in the construction of their Lotzi communis. As a hymn writer, John perfected the form of Song of the East, known as the Canon. John's compositions remain beloved in both East and West. Lutherans in English-speaking lands are particularly familiar with some of his Easter hymnody, Come, you faithful, raise the strain, and The Day of Resurrection. Perhaps his most hauntingly beautiful piece is this reflection on the contrast between the passing joys of earth and the lasting blessedness of the beatific vision. What earthly joy remains untouched by grief? What glory stands forever on the earth? Frail shadows all, delusive dreams, which death will one day sweep away. But in the light of your countenance, O Christ, and in the enjoyment of your beauty, give rest to those whom you have chosen and taken, for you are the lover of mankind. He could well have had such words on his lips when he died in 749, a teacher of the church, revered and loved. Let us pray. O Lord, through your servant John of Damascus, you proclaimed with power the mysteries of the true faith. Confirm our faith, so that we may confess Jesus to be true God and true man, singing the praises of the risen Lord, and so that by the power of the resurrection we may also attain the joys of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We conclude again with Luther's morning prayer. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son 
that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.